Hello language learners, welcome back to English with Maddie for another reading practice video. Today in our reading practice, we are going to be reading and talking about one of my very favorite topics, something that I studied when I was in university. So today we are reading the advanced level version of my article about endangered languages. So ex endangered languages are exactly what they sound like. They are languages that are in danger of going extinct, of disappearing. And so in this article, we are going to read more about which languages those are, why they are disappearing, what can we do about it. As I mentioned, I will be reading aloud the advanced version of this article. And as you know, if you follow the link in my description box, you can head over to the English with Maddie website to find other levels of this text that will be easier. And each of those levels, whether beginner or advanced, will come with a study guide, including vocabulary and comprehension questions. And this advanced version of the text will also come with a listening practice worksheet that will be exactly this article, but with a few blanks where some words are supposed to be. So you can look at all of the blanks and as you look at the listening comprehension worksheet, you can play this video listening to me read aloud and challenge yourself to write down all of the words you hear me say as you go through the transcript. If you want to check to make sure your answers are correct, you can look at the original article to see what the words were supposed to be and see if you got them right and spelled correctly. So without further ado, let's get into reading. I'm going to do my best to read this at my natural pace, uh, natural speed, tone of voice, everything so that you can get the most out of this learning experience. If it is too hard, that is okay. Understandable, it might be. If that is the case, don't worry. Again, there are easier articles that you can use to practice from. And even still, even if this is challenging, it will benefit your English so much just to listen to it and adjust your ears to English speaking and reading. So let's get going. Endangered languages, advanced level text. In reading number two, we learned about endangered animals and what makes some types of animals easier to protect than others. Today in reading number six, we will learn about endangered languages. Before you begin reading, think about what helped raise money to protect endangered animals. What do you think will make a difference for endangered languages? Can you think of any languages that are endangered? Is your native language endangered? It is challenging to fully wrap your head around just how much knowledge and culture is ingrained into a language until you begin learning another language and trying to search for words to express yourself and can't find them. The more a culture values or talks about a certain concept, the more diverse and nuanced the vocabulary becomes in that area. If a tribe relies on the knowledge of different kinds of snow due to its location and animal rearing, such as the Sami people in Northern Europe, the language might reflect that as the Sami language does, with an incredible 180 words for snow. In Japanese, the focus on nature and appreciating it in an almost philosophic and poetic sense is revealed in words like komorebi, which takes several words to explain, sunlight filtered through trees in English. Every language is embedded with these details, with an incredible amount of knowledge that might not be found across the globe. Every one of the 6,000 odd languages that is used in the present day carries information vital to the culture that it is intertwined with. And that information is disappearing before our eyes. Linguists predict that at least half of the languages that exist today will be extinct within the century, and that as few as 600 are safe from endangerment. 
hundreds of languages are spoken by only a few dozen or a few hundred speakers and may have dwindled down to a single last remaining speaker. Globalization certainly plays a role in this phenomenon, though despite the increase in speed at which languages are dying in recent years, languages have always died. For centuries, wars and colonization played a large role as one group or country would dominate another and force their language and culture upon the oppressed people. Boarding schools have also served as a way to wipe out tribal languages. By educating children in a single standard language and punishing or shaming students into looking down on their own use of their mother tongue. Despite these human driven methods of language death though, for thousands of years, languages were at risk from mother nature as well. If a language was spoken by a small group of people to begin with and only in a particular area, if there were to be a natural disaster, famine, migration, disease, an entire population could be wiped out and their language with them. With an increasingly global world, languages are at greater risk than ever before by global languages like English, Spanish, Russian, and Chinese. However, as people are able to communicate and travel with greater ease and understanding, it also provides a unique opportunity to discover, record, maintain, or even revitalize languages before it is too late. Linguists such as David Harrison traveled the globe doing exactly that. Preserving languages by filming, recording, and writing down everything he can as fast as he can. Harrison, the author of Last Speakers and star of the short documentary, The Linguists, explains that he is baffled by anyone who could be interested in linguistics and yet choose to focus on a topic such as French, when there are thousands of books detailing such knowledge and ignore language such as Kalawaya in Bolivia, which is not only spoken by fewer than 100 people with no written system, but also holds medicinal knowledge of thousands of plants that Western science has yet to discover. Harrison hopes to use his global platform to share what he records and learns and hopes to get the chance to talk with last speakers about how it feels to be in their position. Chemoeve, a Native American language found in Arizona in the United States, is known by only one man, one last speaker. This man sadly recounted to the camera in the linguist that he often talks to himself when he is alone just to have the chance to use his beloved language. This is just a taste of what is going on with endangered languages. This relatively unknown field of linguistics is vast and rich in knowledge, and it is incredibly time sensitive. Though not all languages have the potential to be maintained, much less revitalized, many have the potential to be documented. This is not simple work, however, as the majority of the most endangered languages do not have a written system and have never been written down. A lot of the work being done today with endangered languages is helping native speakers of at-risk languages to create their own material to be used to share or even just remember what is currently known. The internet allows for eBooks to be whipped together in the blink of an eye. And with little assistance, apps can be developed to create dictionaries for anyone with a smartphone. What happens in the next decades remains to be seen, and it is not too late to invest yourself in learning or encouraging these languages before it isn't an option. So that is it for the advanced version of the endangered languages text. I hope that this sparked your interest in this topic. I have taken several classes on the topic. There are so many great books and resources to dive into if you found this interesting. As mentioned in the article, there are currently thousands of languages spoken on earth by people all over the world, and half of them are going to be gone in our lifetime. That is insane to me, and I hope it is insane to you as well, and that it sparks your curiosity to learn more about what these languages are, where they are spoken, who speaks them, and if there are endangered languages in the area where you live. So there is a study guide to help. There were some tricky words in here. I do have a vocabulary list included in the advanced version of this study guide. 
And I also have, of course, the beginner and absolute beginner articles that you can read if this was too challenging. If it was challenging, but in a good way, keep reading, keep practicing. This will be so much help to you as you continue on your language journey. So thank you as always for studying with me. I cannot wait to see you next time for another language adventure. Um, I have so many more articles to share with you. And if you haven't already, also go and check out my Real Talk and Baking with Maddie series for extra learning English practice. So until next time, happy studying.